ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I have not been more appalled. You, 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 you heard me, I used the word appalled. I have not been more appalled than by what I'm about to show you. I want y'all to pay attention because I wouldn't have known it unless I was, I'm helping somebody in a particular state of where they do the can net a cuts that's the wrong one it's this one right here the can net a cuts now this is the judicial power now y'all gonna be hearing wait y'all hold on i gotta go hurt the dog y'all give me one second that's why i gotta keep them inside because she actually laid on top of one of them not fully but partially and he couldn't move out of the way so that's why they're inside, so I can keep an eye on them. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to help y'all understand something right here. For the state of Connecticut, it says judicial power shall be vested, shall be vested in the Supreme Court of Errors, a superior court, and such inferior courts as the General Assembly shall, from time to time, ordain and establish. The powers and jurisdiction of which courts shall be defined by law. Uh-oh. Shall be defined by law. Ladies and gentlemen, you know they added this later, right? Well, the reason why I can tell you that they added this later, because the Constitution is the law. Okay? The Constitution is the law. It's always been the case, but let's take a look. 1850, altered by amendment, 1876, 1880, 1934, and 1947. Of course they would amend it. Ladies and gentlemen, these are supposed to be irrevocable, irrevocable, no irrevocable, contracts. But that's okay. Here, look, do me a favor, ladies and gentlemen. We're not here to talk about Connecticut's judicial power. That's for the motion that I'm writing. I'm here to talk to you guys about Article 6, Qualification of Electors. Let's see if we can learn something. You guys don't mind? Now watch this. All persons who have been, or shall hereafter, previous to the ratification of this Constitution, be admitted, freemen, according to the existing laws of this state, shall be electors. Oh, every white male citizen of the United States Every white male citizen of the United States, every white male citizen of the United States who shall have gained a settlement in this state, attained the age of 21 years, and resides in the town in which he may offer himself to be admitted to the privilege of an elector at least six months preceding, shall have free, a free shall have a free, pay attention, a freehold estate of a yearly value of $70 in this state. Of a yearly value of $70 in this state. I'll get $70 every single year. Or having been enrolled in the militia, shall have preferred military duty therein for the term of one year. Next, preceding the time, he shall offer himself admission or being liable thereto. Shall have been, by the authority of law, excused therefrom or shall have paid a state tax within a year next preceding the time that he shall present himself for which or for such a mission and shall sustain a good moral character shall on his taking such oath as may be prescribed to be an elector ladies and gentlemen 1897 this has not been amended Did you see how this violates the due process clause and equal protection clause of law? Every white man, no, I'm not, I ain't got nothing to do with whites. I ain't got nothing against them. I ain't got nothing for them because I don't understand what a white person is. I've tried looking. I ain't never seen no white person. I got this piece from my desk and I ain't never seen nobody look like that. They made the movie Powder, but that, that no, that he wasn't like that. Then, you know, they got all kinds of things. They, they talk, tall, call people like albinos. But I ain't never seen a white person, just like I ain't never seen a black person. I've seen brown people. Yep. 
tan people. But I've never seen nobody that's yellow. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I have to stand up to look at the doggies to make sure everybody was doing what they were supposed to be doing. That's breathing! <laughs> anyway, they're all breathing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to make this long. The thing, and I'm, you think that I'm focusing on the white person. That's not what I'm focusing on. It says that you guys have estates in Connecticut that are held in trust, ladies and gentlemen. Don't take my word for it. Read it right there. Shall have a freehold estate of a yearly value of $70 in this state. I didn't make this up. This is your constitution. Article 6. And it says every, and it's the affirmative and the so-called acts of Congress regarding equal protection. Technically, this could be held as unconstitutional, but don't go after it that way. I'm telling you, go after your estate, people. Go after your estate, people. Go after your monies that are owed you. $70 a year times 54? That's a little bit of that's a little bit of cheddar, y'all. Seventy dollars a year times eighty-nine. That's a lot of bit of cheddar. Okay, seventy dollars a year times twenty. That's just a little bit of cheddar. But there you go, Connecticut. I just stumbled across it because when I read, I read surrounding text. I don't just read one section. So I wanted to see what it said. And there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all this is talking about. Uh, and we're going to let y'all go, okay? All right, y'all, 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 y'all take care. Bye-bye.